So when all of these enlightenment factors are deep enough and in perfect balance, then you will experience Nibbana at that time. And we'll go on and show you how that happens. Again, monks, by completely surmounting the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Uh, by this time, when you get into the realm of neither perception nor non-perception, any, anything that arises in the mind, the six R's just automatically take care of it. Now, the relaxing is a very, very necessary and important aspect of the meditation because you've been doing the relaxing from the very beginning and your mind went from flip-flopping back and forth and as you relaxed more and more it stopped moving quite so much when you got into the fourth jhana instead of moving so much it's vibrating as you continue relaxing the vibration becomes less and less and less until you get to neither perception nor non-perception, it's hard to tell whether there's any vibration at all, but there is some. Then, by completely overcoming the base of neither perception nor non-perception, Sariputta entered upon and abided in the cessation of perception and feeling. And this is when that vibration completely stops. There's no more movement of mind's attention at all. And his taints were destroyed by his seeing with wisdom. What does this say? This says that what happens when the perception and feeling arose again. There has to be this stopping and then the starting up again. But your mindfulness is so sharp at this time. You're able to see exactly how the links of dependent origination arise and how they cease. And your understanding is so good that it destroys all of the taints. Then the experience of Nibbana occurs. This is exactly how it happens. A lot of people that I've talked to have come to me and they said, you know, I've had this experience and I think I'm enlightened. What do you think? And I talk to them and then I start talking about dependent origination. And if they haven't seen dependent origination, then that's not the Nibbana that the Buddha was talking about. I have had uh, one or two people come to me and they said, you know, I had this experience. It was a closing off and then I saw some things. I didn't really recognize them. They were flashing very quickly. And then I had this experience that I think was Nibbana. What do you think? And then I start talking to them about dependent origination and I go to the text and I read it. And then they start going, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I saw that. I saw that. I say, okay, you've had the experience. Good for you. And there's still more to do. Oh, you mean I, I got to go through this whole thing again? Well, you've had what is called path knowledge. The fruition knowledge is where it happens again, there, and it can happen while you're doing just about anything. Um, I had one student that it happened to, she, she had the experience at a retreat, she went home. Two days later, she's washing the dishes and she feels this deep, deep state coming up, and she goes and she sits down and she sees the cessation of perception and feeling, and then she sees the dependent origination, and then she, she has this experience again. Well, 
what just happened to me? Well, you've just experienced the fruition. That's where the personality change really happens. That's where you don't ever again have any doubt as to whether your experience was real or not. You don't have any doubt as to whether dependent origination is real or not. You don't have any doubt as to whether the, the Four Noble Truths are real or not. You don't have any belief that rites and rituals are going to show you to Nibbana. You don't have any belief that whatever arises is personal. You see everything as being an impersonal process. You don't have any lust arise in your mind ever again. You don't have any hatred arise in your mind ever again. Doesn't matter what happens. It just will not arise again. That's a person that has pretty good mindfulness. And they're real fun to be around whenever you can find them. Now, what happens with the fruition? And you'll be able to tell what level of your fruition you are experiencing is by the number of times you see the dependent origination arise and pass away. If you see it arise and pass away three times really quickly, and then you have the experience of Nibbana again, that means that you are an anagami. You're at the third stage of enlightenment, and I just described that. If you see that happen four times, then you have become an arahat. And in Arahat, they don't have any pride. They don't have any, any desire to be reborn anywhere. They don't have any restlessness arise. They don't have any dullness arise. They don't have any ignorance. They are the kind of person you really want to hang around if you're going to hang around with somebody because their mind is so clear and so bright and so in the present moment and so ha they're so intuitive that you can ask them even the dumbest questions and they will give you an answer that's really appropriate according to the Dhamma. That's the advantage of becoming an Araha. Can that happen in this lifetime? Yes haven't run across many people that have. But then again, there's not a whole lot of people that have gone back to the original teachings of the Buddha and followed the directions the way he gave them without adding or subtracting things. You can't add or subtract anything in this practice. If you're really serious about getting off of the wheel of samsara, you have to give up other disciplines and just do this discipline. If you start mixing disciplines, then you start developing some bad habits one way or another and that slows down your progress and can actually stop your progress. So you have to be real careful with this. Sariputta emerged mindful from that attainment. Having done so, he recalled the states that had passed, ceased, and changed. So indeed, these states not having been come into being, they vanished. Regarding those states, he abided unattracted, unrepelled, independent, detached, free, dissociated with a mind rid of barriers. He understood there is no escape beyond this. 
and with the cultivation of that attainment, he confirmed that there is not. He knew that his work had been done. But the importance of this can't be understated. This is the experience of Nibbana. There can't be any other experience of Nibbana. That's one of the things that the Buddha says when he's talking about dependent origination. Either you see it or you don't. If you don't, you ain't got it. So that was one of the reasons that I pulled the Samyut Nikaya out yesterday and said that this is what the Buddha says to look for in a teacher. You look for a teacher that knows and understands dependent origination in the Four Noble Truths. And how do you do your practice? By practicing, observing how mind's attention moves through the Four Noble Truths and dependent origination. That's the practice. And it's kind of been set aside because there's a uh, commentaries that they try to divide dependent origination up into three lifetimes and talk about dependent origination generally or they try to do it through Abhidhamma which is a real maze trying to get through to have any, any deep understanding. But the only way you're going to experience Nibbana is through seeing dependent origination and finding a teacher that talks about it constantly. <laughs>